Good morning, buenos dias, bonjour, buongiorno, annyeonghaseyo, and I'm actually going to add aloha to this because it didn't occur to me before, I am living in Hawaii, <laughs> so I should be saying aloha. Interestingly enough, aloha not only means hello and goodbye, but also love. So they say things like, let's do this with much aloha, let's show each other some aloha, and they also have things like aloha Friday, which um, in Puerto Rico we do have an equivalent kind of like Viernes Social. Just a little interesting tidbit there for you. Welcome back to the vlog. Thank you for joining me today. In case you are wondering about the headset, remember that the little phone holder on my car is broken. And I noticed that whenever I start recording, hang on a second. Aha, every time I start recording with the car audio, it uh, has a lot of noise because the phone is just kind of like kick, 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 on this. I know that so many of you have been concerned about my going out to stores and things like that, but today is a doctor's appointment and not one that I can do by teleconsult because it is my hair loss follow-up. It's only been two months since my doctor diagnosed me with telogen effluvium. Uh, the the test for alopecia and um, something else I can't remember right now they those came back negative but I did have elevated testosterone in one of my tests and he wanted to start me on oh forgive me if I say this wrong spironolactone spironolactane I can't remember but my OBGYN since it was elevated testosterone I contacted her too uh, she repeated the test and then it came back fine actually it came back a little low so I haven't taken anything for elevated testosterone and I decided to stick with the hair max comb which I've been using faithfully three times a week as directed also using some uh, hair products from a friend of mine who's in direct sales and it's for hair growth too I also consulted that with my doctor he said those products were fine I did not want to do the minoxidil also known as Rogaine because of <laughs> personal reasons. Things I want to share with him, I am not seeing hair growth just yet. I have been getting a lot of frizz, but I follow other people who have TE here on YouTube, and I've also uh, looked at some blogs, and apparently when you have a lot of hair that's kind of just sticking up, those are baby hairs or new hairs, and, and it's difficult to put them down or control them because they are new, so they have nowhere to go but up. Hopefully that is the case. Other than that, the only thing I have to report is that hair loss has significantly reduced. Do you remember that ball of hair I showed you? That's what I was shedding for quite a while. I've been shedding hair since October, November, 2019. This, these past couple of weeks, probably a week or two, I, I've been shedding a lot less, like back to normal what you should be shedding and what I'm used to shedding. That's what I have for him today, but I also have some tips for you on how to maximize your time with your provider. I don't know if it's happened to you that a lot of times it kind of feels like you're going to a doctor's appointment just so he can look at your face, he or she can look at your face and look at your test results if you have some and then that's it, that's the whole appointment. You could have probably just done that over the phone. They're charging my health insurance 100 something, 200 something dollars uh, per visit I have a 20 something dollar copay for each visit and all we did was, hey, this is where you're at. These are your blood tests for the next couple of weeks. You're good. Then, and this was portrayed in the show House, the doorknob question. You reach for the doorknob and that's when you have another question. Or you have a question after you leave the office and say, well, now I got away from my next appointment. Prepare beforehand. Whether you want to put it on your phone or a notebook or a sticky note, just write down the questions that you have for your provider. If you have test results that you're not entirely sure the doctor has in his system or her system, uh, definitely take a copy with you. I've done that several times. I have an entire binder I think I've shown you uh, the, of my test results and history and all those other things because a lot of times they say well I don't know your history and I don't know what happened before so I can't tell you I'm like well here you go what do you think now I'm about to get on the highway now not sure if this is even actually working so I hope you got to hear everything I'll see you guys at the doctor's office
Alrighty, we're here, obviously getting ready to be out in the world. Unlike my other doctor's appointments, this is not a doctor's office, this is at a hospital. And you know what happens at hospitals. So, uh, yeah, definitely mask, got my hand sanitizer, got uh, a Lysol spray, got a little bit of allergies too. Here we go. Recently started wearing mascara again, since now all people see are your eyes. But anyway, here we go. You ready? Real quick, because I don't know when they're gonna come back. It's super funny. So she's taking pictures of this. Then this is a new area. The rest was over here, over here, and somewhere at the back. I say, can I get a picture? Because I don't have a picture of the before and after. She says, we're gonna have to sign a consent form so that we can release the pictures to you. Like I need, I need to sign something so I can have pictures of my own hair. <laughs> But anyway, that was the assistant. Now the doctor's gonna come in and then check because there's also part of the back. I don't know where it is, so I can tell her. Oh boy, do I have information for you. Wow. If you didn't see the first appointment I had with this doctor, I'm gonna link it above so you know how things have evolved. I'm trying to look for my hand sanitizer. I couldn't find it, goodness, okay. Hang on, let me turn on the light. And here we go. Yes, I do have telogen effluvium. That does not change. Even though I have telogen effluvium, he suspected, and again, it's in the video from last time, he suspected I had alopecia. I was getting tested for that. The hormone test, which lets you know you have androgenetic alopecia. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, the testosterone level came back at 50, maximum is 45. Then my OBGYN repeated the test, it was at 35, so it wasn't clear what was going on but he looked at my parting here he looked at the back of my head and once he saw this he said this already confirms that you have female pattern alopecia fun <laughs> now this isn't a completely hopeless situation he told me he has pediatric patients uh, what do you call it geriatric patients and other teens who have different types of alopecia because there are different types and they were using minoxidil 2% he said really just give it a shot try it here in the middle at least so that you can see a difference he guarantees like he he swears by it he guarantees that it'll work as for that blood work, my elevated ANA autoantibodies, they used to be at like 1200, they were 300 here, the, minim, the maximum is 40. There's just so much going on in my body, it's difficult to pinpoint which is the one that's causing this and, and triggering it. So he went back to the spir spironolactone treatment. I told him that my OB wasn't agreeing with this because it does cause weight loss, it's a diuretic, and uh, there's something about potassium buildup or whatever. There's so, there are so many things about it. He wanted me to read about it too before I start taking it. But at the same time, I can't really start it right now because I have a history of kidney stones. Now I have a referral to a urologist. Got some more blood work coming up. <laughs> Now I have to get going because they don't validate parking here and uh, it's been over an hour. But I do wanna tell you something about the doctor. I had told my husband and my mother that I was gonna give this doctor one more chance because the office itself administratively is terrible. You saw that my appointment was March 30th. I had lab orders April 28th and then they didn't even see the repeat labs that my OBGYN had faxed over. And the calls, they, they're like, we're going to get back to you for this call at two to three days past. It's just, it was so frustrating. But the doctor himself is very knowledgeable and he listens, which is one of the biggest things that I have when it comes to doctors. If the doctor listens, I will put up with whatever to, to actually get this doctor's care. Remember that I had told my gynecologist, my gastroenterologist, and my rheumatologist that I was losing my hair and none of them cared. Literally did not give a single rat's patootie about it and this doctor said oh yeah i can totally see it and let's start doing this this and that but the office is not that great so you know what 
He is a good doctor. He knows what he's talking about. He knows how to describe things to me. I am so sorry this went on for so long, but I'm trying to fit a one hour appointment. Oops. Yep, my, my car's telling me to leave. I'm trying to fit a one hour appointment into just a few minutes and provide as much information as I can for you. And remember that not all this information applies to you. This is not a diagnosis for you. I want you to know this is my experience. This was my diagnosis, my evaluation, at my doctor's appointment with my doctor. So this is just mostly to share my experience with you so you have a base of comparison, not to lead yourself by this and say, well, if she has it. I have it. Careful, okay? <laughs> I just woke up from a very short nap. You know, it was probably an hour, if that. And you can tell that my makeup is off, my hair is up, and that's because I was crying. I'm okay, really. Like I said, it was it was just a stress relief, and I wanted to share this moment with you guys because if you are experiencing the same things, I want you to feel normal. I want you. To, I want you to feel. Uh, accompanied in this situation. I mean, I've never felt alone and I'm so grateful for that, that I want to pass it on. I want to pay it forward. How it got started was that after lunch, after I got home, played with my dogs, had some lunch, watched some TV and fiddled around with social media, uh, answering some comments and interacting with people, I started getting ready for my first ever Facebook Live that's gonna be this Friday. By the time you see this, it will have long passed, but point is, I'm, I, it, it's a very big moment for me. I've never done a Facebook Live. It's gonna be for my home business. I pulled out all the things that had to do with my home business when I first started because I'm going to be sharing my experience with my customers. I have all these things here that reminded me of how I got started and what I was going through when I first got started because this came around at the same time that I got my Crohn's diagnosis, at the time ulcerative colitis diagnosis. Instead of reminiscing how each piece of prize and reward that's here on this table instead of reminiscing on the moment when i got it and what achievement earned me this thing and things like that i actually started thinking i remember i got this when i stopped bleeding i remember i got this when i was on butestinite for the first time i remember i got this when i started remicade i remember i got this when i was in the hospital honestly i just became so overwhelmed pretty much everything in my life reminds me of a moment when i got a new diagnosis because it was kind of a new one every year. 2014 was ulcerative colitis undiagnosed. 2015 was Raynaud's. 2016 was joint pain. 2017 was eczema. 2018 is something very personal. 2019 was um, fatigue. And now 2020, it's telogen effluvium and female pattern alopecia. I became so overwhelmed. I just, I, I broke down. The the tiny achievements that I've been able to acquire this far uh, have been so small in comparison to the efforts that I'm putting into it that really I just I couldn't my heart couldn't take it I don't know if it happens to you but while you're going through that breakdown when you're going through that emotional moment then everything comes crumbling down then you start thinking oh my gosh I'm being so weak crying about something so silly when there are people out there who are completely immobilized there are people who are are confined to a wheelchair there are people who don't have their limbs there are people who, who are neurologically disabled there are people out there who can't do so many things and me here fully able-bodied albeit you know sometimes i can't even stand up but able-bodied nonetheless crying about you know losing hair i mean it wasn't about losing hair but getting a new diagnosis and things like that then you start feeling silly for crying so you cry even more <laughs> And as you can see, I'm laughing at myself right now. As I always say, embrace your feelings, analyze them, assess them, use them for the better, and then just move on. My husband is still not home and he actually called me that they said that all the helicopters are down, which means that he will definitely not be home anytime soon. I'm going to go ahead and get started on a very safe dinner, something for me, because he said that he can just eat anything else that was frozen, so no dinner for him until he gets home. Time to close all the windows. See, these are the little darlings that help me stay all happy. They play with me when mommy's sad, right? They wag those little tails. <laughs> They're so sweet. If you're ever considering getting a dog, I would highly recommend one that's a family dog because these two, oh my gosh, what would I do without them? Especially in an empty house.
we're putting the doggies to bed now so we can go to sleep too we have an early morning tomorrow because even though he's off and my class is at 11 um there's a I can't even think anymore. A guy who's going to take care of the roaches. He's going to come between 8 and 10 a.m. He's going to do the inside and outside of the house. So we're going to get up super early. And... <laughs> and clean, um, you know, wherever the... Uh, what are they called? Exterminators. They have to look everywhere in all the crevices, so we're going to clean, deep clean the house early in the morning. Remember to go check out the Korean or Learn with, learn Korean with Me playlist. I'm telling you, I can't talk. I'm so tired. Um, remember to check out that playlist. I'm no longer going to be putting the videos at the end of the vlog. I'm actually going to have a separate video daily, um, just so it'll be easier for you guys to find. So with that, good night, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow. I've been sitting in the car for 70 minutes. Had I known this was gonna take so long, I would have just stayed home because I have my first ever Facebook Live tomorrow. Need to vent a little bit right now. I'm so angry. You know, my husband and I don't fight. I did give him a little bit of attitude when he got in the car, but he totally knew where I was coming from. One of the tougher things of having a home business is distractions. Great start to the week with another doctor's appointment. The newest thing on this side of my medical life is that I'm gonna start seeing a nutritionist and she does.